Go to the Lord and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another time you've given us, Lord, to gather in your house. Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your protection, Lord, that allows us, Lord, to come to this place once again. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that's gathered here, and we pray your blessings on them. Pray, Lord, that you would look on the hearts of each and every one that's gathered here, Lord, and that you would meet the need that's present there. Give us that, Lord, that you would have us to have. Help us to receive that, Lord, that, that you will bring. Holy Spirit, I pray as we look into the Word that you would come and you would deliver the message that you would have to be delivered. Just take this flesh and use it for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to begin, I'm just going to jump to a, a couple of short scriptures before I get into the main text. I want to lay out a thought. In the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 32, Jesus speaking says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's the thought that, that the Lord laid on my heart. I know as we go through this world, as we go through our lives, there are a lot of things that try to beset us, and a lot of things that try to bring us down, and a lot of things that worry us. Uh, I know Jason said this morning when he was teaching Sunday school, he said sometimes it gets to the point where you wonder why bother, why keep going on. It just looks like everything is arrayed against you. We talk a lot about the way that the world's getting and how uh, the whole world seems to be coming down on the Christian, and anything that has to do with God, and anything that has to do with the Word of God, it is being beset upon, it is being pushed around, it is being pushed back. But as I thought on these things, and, and what we're going through, and what we see happening in the world, and what we know according to the Word is coming on us, the Lord just kept giving me that thought, fear not, little plot. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want to look also in the book of Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. When he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. I know a lot of what we hear today, what we see out of the big name preachers and we see on TV and the big ministries and stuff, all the talk is about tangible things, things you can see, things you can get your hands on, things you can amass, you can build a name, you can build a fortune, you can build whatever this is. And a lot of them preach that this is what is the benefit of receiving Christ or receiving God. That's what the kingdom of God is. But what Christ told them here was that the kingdom of God is not with observation. It's not what you can see. It's not what you can touch. It's not what you can hold in your hands. It's not what you can attain in this life. The kingdom of God is within you. All the good things of God are within you, child of God. So many times we forget that and we're looking out there for the answer. But everything that you need is within you. When you become a born again child of God, everything that you need indwells you. God has placed it in you. When the Holy Spirit moves in you, you have need of nothing else. You have need of nothing else at all. There is nothing that this world can add to that. There is nothing that you can add to that. There is nothing that any ministry can add to that. Everything that you need is within you. Just real quick, I want you to hear this. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, I'm not going to read it, but uh, if you're a Bible reader, you know that Jesus told the parable of the wheat and the tares. How that there was one who went out and sowed wheat, then the enemy came along and sowed tares among the wheat. And he's talking about the kingdom of heaven there. But what I want to get, I want to make a point here. Later on, the disciples came and asked him to explain this parable to them. And what I really want you to hear is this part. He said, Jesus said that in this parable, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. What I want you to get here, it says the good seed are the children of God. Within every seed is whatever is supposed to come from that seed. Uh, I planted beans last week and they're coming up. But that bean, inside that bean, is a whole plant. Inside that bean is a whole plant that will bring forth multitude after multitude after multitude of, of other beans. Within that seed is everything that is necessary to make that bean survive, to make that bean reproduce, to make that bean bring forth. And he said that in this parable, the seed, the seed are the children of God. You are the seed. And within every seed is everything 
everything that it will need in order to come forth and to multiply and to reproduce and to be fruitful. I really want to make this point and I really want you to get a hold of this point. You need nothing else other than what God has already placed inside of you. You don't need some man telling you that you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do something else. And when you do that, you'll start to amass things of this world. You'll start to amass treasure. You'll start to amass fortune. You'll start to amass popularity or some other kind of thing. That's not what this is all about. The kingdom of God was within you. Every good thing that God has, everything within the realm of God is within the child of God. We so often forget that when troubles come. We often forget that when problems come, that everything we need is on the inside. There's only one place we got to look. It's already here. We've already been given the answer. We've already been given the way out. We have already been given the tool to do the job. It is all within us, but we forget it and we go look in other places for it. We need to understand something. God didn't leave his children helpless. He didn't leave them without the tools they need. He didn't need them to leave them without anything. He gave it to you. I hope you're understanding this the way that God gave it to me. Within every seed is everything that seed needs in order to survive, in order to grow, in order to be fruitful, in order to multiply, in order to make it through. Within that seed is everything it needs. You are the seed. Jesus said that you are the seed. The seed are the children of God. And within every seed is everything you need. We need to quit looking out here. And begin to look here to that Holy Spirit that indwells us. He is the answer. He has everything. Amen. Thank you. I want to go to the book of Kings in chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And you may wonder how this all fits in. But it does. Chapter 6, 2 Kings, beginning at verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, At such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. I want to back up and I want to make a couple points in this scripture. The, the Israel was at war with Syria and Syria had decided that they're going to come up against them and that they're going to attack them. They're going to set up an ambush and that they're going to attack them. I want to tell you something. You're at war too. You are at war with Satan. Just like that king of Syria had his multitude that he was going to bring up against Israel. Satan has his multitude. He has demons that he will send up against you. He has people in the world that he will send up against you. He has people in your family that he will send up against you. He has multitudes that will come and will try to attack you and will try to beset you and will try to defeat you. He will work through sickness. He will work through poverty. He will work through your job. He will work through your family. He will work through anything that he can get his grubby claws in to try to beset you just like this king of Syria was trying to beset the people of Israel. But there was a man of God and he came and he warned the king of Israel about what was going on. And over the last year or more longer than that God has been sending messages to those little people here telling you that Satan would like nothing better than to destroy you but he keeps sending you warnings and telling you to watch out for him in this area watch out for him in that area 
you. He tells you what you do to, to prepare, to get ready to face the battles that are coming. And it's upsetting Satan. A group Bob said many, many times, it just aggravates the snot out of Satan that he can't do nothing to this little tiny bunch of people, that he can't get his claws in this little tiny bunch of people. He's got the big uh, thousand person assembly over there, and he's got one down there, but he can't get his claws in this little assembly because there are people of God here, and God keeps warning them to watch out. Don't do this and don't do that. Just like the man of God warned the king of Israel, don't go over there because that's where the ambush is. God keeps sending the messages, and it's upsetting Satan, and he's going to get to a point just like the king of Syria did here where he's going to get tired of it, and he thinks he's got an answer for it. And I believe this is not only a message to give us hope and to give us encouragement, but I believe it's a warning that Satan is going to try, and he's going to try, and he's going to try, and he's going to come, and he's going to try to take people out. The, the warning kept coming, and the warning kept coming, and the king went to his people and said, now who's telling? Who's telling them what's going on? They're always ready for my attack. They always know what to do to avoid my attack. And they told him that the messages keep coming from God. There is a man that keeps bringing the messages and warning him what you are up to. That's what did the king do then? He said, well, we'll just take out the man of God. So he sent an army. And it may be you, and it may be you, and it may be me. But Satan wants nothing better than to take out those who are obedient to the word of God. He wants right. nothing better if he can start taking out those who will sound the warning, who will give the warning, who will put out the word. If he can take them out, he would like nothing better than that. He thought if he could go down here and he could take out the man of God, if he could take out the prophet, then the king would have no worry. Then the king would have no way of knowing what he's up to. And then he would be able to destroy the kingdom. He thinks that if he comes and he comes and works in this church, he thinks if he sends his little demons or, or the people of the world or whatever he decides to use, he thinks if he can come and he can take that out of the way, then he can have this little church. But God's got other ideas. God's got other plans. He thought he was going to go down there and he was going to surround the man of God. He thought he was going to go and send his army and he was going to take him out and he was going to destroy him. So he sent his armies down there and they come past him about and they were ready to take him and the servant of the man of God went out and he saw all this army that was surrounding them that were round about him and he said, oh, what are we going to do? They're here to destroy us. What are we going to do? And so often, some of us will get to that plane when things start piling up, when things start looking bad, when you don't know which way to turn, when it seems like everything's against you. And again, I'm reminded of what Jason said in Sunday school. Sometimes it just seems like you want to say, why even bother? Why go on? That's exactly what Satan wants you to do. If, if this man, this servant of the man of God would have had his way, he would have just threw up his hands and surrendered. He would have just walked away. But what we got to remember is when it looks the worst, God is the strongest. When it is the darkest, the light shows the brightest. It is within you. No matter how bad it looks, no matter what's being thrown at you, no matter what's coming against you, the answer is already there. The answer is always there. You don't got to look anywhere for it. You just need to open your spiritual eyes. When the servant of the man of God went out there and he saw this army that was surrounding him, and he saw them all across the hill and ready to attack. And he was just ready to give up. And he said, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What did the man of God say? Fear not. That's where I started out. The first scripture I read, what did Jesus say? Fear not. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, to give you the things of God, all the things of God. When he's talking about the kingdom of God, he's just not talking about heaven someday. The kingdom of God is already here. Jesus said it when he walked on the earth. The kingdom of God is already here. What is the kingdom of God? It is the realm of God. A kingdom is a realm. What is, what is that? It's everything within a certain area. It belongs to that king. It's that king's realm. He can do with it whatsoever he chooses. He has control over it. And Jesus said that that, the realm of God, everything of God, everything that God owns, everything that God has, everything that God wants for you, it's already within you. You already have it. It is within your hand. It lives within you. It dwells within you. 
Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you. Therefore, you don't need to fear anything. There is nothing that shall by any means be able to hurt you as long as you remember that. The problems come when we forget that and we get caught up in the problem and we get caught up in the situation just like this servant of the man of God. All he saw was the enemy. That's all he saw. And so many times when things are going wrong, that's all we see. We forget who we are. We forget whose we are. We forget what has been given to us. We forget what we are capable of through Christ. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? That's the point that we get to. What are we going to do now? How are we ever going to survive then? Those that are against us are a multitude. Those that are against us are innumerable. They outnumber us. They just so, so, so many of them. There's nothing that we can do about it. But listen to what the man of God said. He said, Fear not, for they that be with us or more than they that be with them. And that's true of every child of God. I don't care how many demons Satan sticks on you. I don't care how many of his servants he has in this world that he sticks on you. I don't care how many sicknesses he tries to put on you, or if he empties your bank account, or if he breaks your car down, or whatever it else that he decides that he's going to do. Whatever he tries, they that be with us are more than they that be with him. They that be with us are mightier than they that be with him. They that be with us are more able than they that be with him. The only way Satan can ever win is if he makes you forget. Amen. You already have the victory. Right. Christ won the victory. Amen. Christ defeated Satan. It says in there that he defeated him. He made a show of him openly. He did it so that there is no doubt that he was defeated. The victory was won. And when you accepted Christ, he gave that victory to you. You are already victorious as long as you remember that you are victorious. Amen. You may not have a big bank account. You may not have a nice car. You may not have a nice house. You may not have all the worldly things. You may not have what all the world looks at and measures as success. A lot of the ministers and ministries that are going on, the way they look at blessing is in dollars and cents. The way they look at blessing is what you can attain. But Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. It's not in anything you can hold. It's not in anything you can attain. It's not in anything you can possess. The real treasure, the real riches are within. You all over in one place. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, but we got our priorities wrong. We got our eyes on the wrong thing. We think it's got to be in dollars and cents. We think it's got to be in this and that and everything else. There is nothing more valuable than the Holy Spirit indwelling you. Amen. Nothing. Amen. It's it preached so much. And I've talked to people, and I've heard it myself, and people get to a point where they've heard the preaching so much that if you were really a child of God, you wouldn't be going through that. If you were really a child of God, you wouldn't have all those problems. If you were really a child of God, you'd be able to pay this, and you'd be able to pay that, and you wouldn't get sick all the time, and you wouldn't have all these issues. If you were really a child of God, you'd always be having sunshine and roses, butterflies and balloons. Everything would always be PG and hunky-dory. I've heard that preached over and over and over and over, and it's a lie. Amen. That's right. Amen. Come on, preach it. That's Satan That's right. trying to get in the church and make you doubt. Right. When you go through hard times and those old false servants come back to you, well, if I was really a Christian, why would this happen to me? That's just Satan. He's gotten into the church in so many ways, and that's just one of the ways that he's gotten in, making you doubt your salvation, make, trying to get plant a seed of unbelief in your mind. I'm going to tell you something according to the Bible. If you're a child of God, you're going to have problems. Amen. You're going to have issues. You're going to have tribulation. If you're a child of God, Satan is going to be fighting you and causing problems and causing issues and causing tribulation. I'm going to tell you something, and this may not always be the case, but 99.9% .9 of the time I believe it to be the case. If everything is always just fine and you don't got no problems and you
Because Satan ain't going to bother the ones he's already got. That's right. The things that are important are the things that cannot be held, cannot be touched, cannot be amassed cannot be attained in any kind of fleshly or worldly way. The things that are important are the things of God that can only be got through the Holy Spirit of God indwelling you. Those are the riches. Those are the things that we need to pursue. I know that in this life, we make that message is from the time you can remember anything until the time that you lay this old body down. The message in this world is get stuff, get stuff, get stuff, get stuff. That's the message that's pounded constantly over and over and over and over again. And you're made to feel as if you're something less than everybody else if you're going through hard times or you have a bad time or you don't have a lot of money. But that is not the way that it is. Uh, we look at things as fleshly eyes. We look at things in an earthly sense. We need to begin to look with spiritual eyes just like this man of God prayed and he prayed that his servant's eyes would be open. That's what I pray for this church, that our eyes will be open and we begin to see what is really important. I know people here are born again. I know you are children of God. I know you got the Holy Spirit indwelling you. But I still know too that this earth has a weight that wraps around us. That there are things that we can't get out of our mind that worry us, that eat us up. I pray that we get beyond that and that we realize and that we understand just like I preached a while back. I have learned no matter what state I am in, there with to be content. I don't care. Whatever else is going on, I've got Christ. I've got the Holy so what else matters? We need to live like that. Amen. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. God takes care of his children. God is always there because you can't see the answer with fleshly eyes, because you can't touch it and hold it, because you can't attain it through your own effort, don't mean that God is not there. I pray that God will open our eyes so that we can see, just like this servant saw, all those angels round about, that we see the truth of the word of God and we see the truth of the provision of God. It's not in dollars and cents. The provision of God is not in material things. It is in spiritual things. And we get so upset and we get so worked up and so down in the dumps and so depressed and so worried because we haven't got those eyes open yet to be able to see what is really important. I communicated with some people in Pakistan. And they live constantly under the threat of the Muslims putting them to death. They live constantly under the threat of when they gather together like this, that they're just going to come in with grenades or with machine guns and just wipe them all out. They were just, uh, last week they told me that they just tried to bring what they call the blasphemy laws against them to get them and lock them up. What the blasphemy laws are, if you preach anything other than uh, Allah and Muhammad, then you're blasphemous and they can lock you up for that. And these people got nothing, but they have no greater joy than to sing the praises of God. They have no greater joy than to be able to stand and proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified. They got nothing. They're constantly on the guard. They're constantly in fear of their lives. They're constantly worried about when the Muslims are going to come through the door and take off their head. And they don't got money. They don't got houses. They don't got all the stuff that we worry so much about. And yet I can hear it in my spirit. I can hear it just in the things that they write. They are so full of the Spirit of God. They are so joyful. They are so happy. They are so content because they have cried. They have realized what the true treasure is. Amen. Amen. We in this country have yet to realize that. That's right. I pray that we get our eyes open 
It's said here a lot. It was said in Sunday school. It's probably said just about every Sunday. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. There may be people sitting here that before too very long, too many years down the road, you don't even got a house to live in. It can happen. I believe that it will happen. It could be not too very long down the road that you're on the run for your life. It could be not too very long down the road that you're locked up for hate speed. All these things are coming. And when they come, we're where is our focus going to be if our focus is not on Christ? If our hearts are not set on Christ, then we're going to have a hard, hard time. That's right. We need to get those eyes open. Quit worrying about this life. Mm -hmm. What did he say in another place? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He'll handle the rest. That's right. And again, I want to make this clear. When he says the kingdom of God, he's not just talking about heaven someday. He's talking about here and now the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God can flourish within you. The kingdom of God can come forth from you. We have yet to get a hold of that. The church in this country doesn't even understand what that is. Listen to me. Do you understand what the kingdom of God is? It is everything about God. It is everything of God. It is God. It is the Holy Spirit indwelling you. If we turn it loose, so things are going to happen. That's right. And you can't convince me that we've turned it loose. How can you contain that? If you let it loose, if you take the lid off, if you open the box, if you let it out, if you understand what it is that is within you, it's going to bust out. But we haven't seen it yet. And I don't think we're going to really see it. We're not going to get the vision. We're not going to get a hold of it until it gets bad. You know, it's tribulation that brings the cream to the top. Amen. It's the heat. It's the fire. It's the torment that brings the dross up so it can be scraped off. It is persecution and tribulation that made the church strong in the beginning. It's going to be persecution and tribulation that makes the church strong in the last days. You can believe me or not believe me, you go study your Bible, it's in there. You go look for it, it's in there. It's tribulation and it's persecution and it's coming. And you're going to have a hard time with it unless you get prepared for it now. And the way to get prepared for it now is pray God open my eyes so that I can see what's really important, so that I can see what really matters, so that I can understand what it is that I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be about so I can really understand what the kingdom of God is. So often we just, I, I heard somebody say this one time, I don't want to be a Christian because I just don't want to sit around miserable and wait for Jesus to come. That's the impression we give people. Oh, yeah. That's the impression we give people. We're not supposed to be just sitting around and waiting for Jesus to come. We have things to do. We need to be about the Father's business. But until we get that spiritual vision, until we can really see what it is that he would have us to do, what we have at our disposal, what it is that we, we can accomplish through him, until we get to that point, we're not going to accomplish the things that he had. This, this prophet and his servant, after he had uh, prayed that God would open the servant's eyes so that he could see all those around them, so that he understood that God was on his side. This prophet already knew, but he let his servant see it. And I believe that's what God wants this morning for you. His servants to get your spiritual eyes open so that you can see what it is that God has already around you, already ready for you, already working for you. It's already in place, but you've got to make a move. Once he can see that, what happened next? Those people came down, that Syrian army came down, and that man of God, because he knew God was on his side, because he knew that God was surrounding him, because he knew it was under God's protection, and that he had God's ear, because of all that, all he did was ask God to blind them. And God blinded them and he delivered them to the king of Israel. All because he understood. You can do the very same thing if you get to that point of understanding. That problem you got, that financial problem, that problem with your family, that emotional problem, uh, that physical problem, that mental problem, that problem on the job, whatever problem it is that you got, that problem with your car, that problem, anything, you fill in the blank, whatever it is. If you get to that point that that man of God was at, all you got to do is say, God, Take care of it. 
and he will. That's right, yeah. that's right. We pray and 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 nothing happens. You know why? Because we don't got the vision. The spiritual vision. We don't understand that within each and every one of us is the most powerful force that could ever be imagined. The most powerful force that ever was or ever will be lives inside of you. Do you really get a hold of that? Do you really understand that? We think it's something when we come here. I, it was great when we anointed up here this morning. We anointed Billy and I felt the spirit of God get on me. That was great. That's nothing. That's nothing compared to the power of the Almighty God. And that indwells you. But we don't see it. I've said this before, and I'll probably say it many more times as long as God lets me draw breath. We've been church too much. We need to get back to being the people of God, not the people of the church. We need to get back to being the people of God and understand what it is that we got. And I, you, you believe me or you don't believe me. That's entirely up to you. But I know that God has told me, if you truly get a hold of that, if you get the vision, if you understand that within you is everything that you need, you are the seed. Jesus said you are the seed, and within every seed is everything that you need. You don't have to look to the outside for anything else. It's all already within you. You have already got that. All you got to do is get the vision. All you got to do is pray, God, open my my spiritual eyes let me see let me understand and I know I know that I know that I know that he has taught me if we would do that we could do the kind of things that that prophet did amen amen I've said this dozens of times if not more God is the same he has not changed he is no respecter of persons. What right. he did for them, right. he will do for you. All these things are here for our example. It shows us how God works. It shows us what God will do. They are our example. The example that we should follow. If we do what they did, if we live like they lived, if we believe like they believed, if we see like they saw, the same things can happen today that happened back then. But we got to get a hold of it. And there's nothing too small for God. Amen. I want to tell you something. In this case, it was Israel that was in the balance. The Syrian army wanted to come down and destroy Israel and take them over. That's something pretty big. No wonder God moved on their behalf. But there's nothing too small for God. I don't know if Peggy and Gary remember this or not, but when we were going around singing, Pat, the guy that was with us, had this old van. They had a lot of miles on it. There was one time we were getting ready to go somewhere and he went to check the oil and there was rust on the dipstick. And God just spoke to my spirit and I said, well, God's going to fix that. He put that in, we went, we came back and he checked it again and the rust was gone. Amen. There's nothing Amen. that is too Amen. small That's for right. God. Right. If you believe, That's right. if you trust, if you can see it. That's all he has, just see it. Mm -hmm. Open your spiritual eyes and understand. I worry so much a lot of time when I get up here that I'm not making this clear and I'm not making this plain. When God gives it to you, it's clear. But trying in my flesh my way with my words to make it clear, I worry that I don't. I want to try to just get to the bottom line and then I'll be done. Within you is everything. Everything that you will ever need. That's right. If you are a child of God, right. Right. in you is everything that you will ever need. You don't got to look out here. You don't got to look out there. You got to look here to that Holy Spirit that indwells you. We don't need to go about worried and upset and concerned and brought down and depressed and all these things because the answer is already here. Now, I'm not going to tell you God's going to fix everything because I don't believe he will. He said you'll have tribulation, you'll have trial, you'll have trouble. He told Paul when he had a problem, my grace is sufficient. But if he don't fix it, he'll give you everything you need to go through it. He'll give you the strength you need. He'll give you the joy you need. He'll give you the patience you need. He'll give you the peace you need. Whatever he does, whether he takes it all away or whether he does it, he will give you what you need yes, you to will. go through. Amen. If you keep your eyes on him and off the problem. That's that servant of the man of God. Once his eyes were open and he could see those angels and chariots of fire round about, I bet he wasn't worried about a thing. I bet that was an amazing sight 
to see those angels. I can just kind of picture those angels in those chariots of fire surrounding that army up on the hills with their swords drawn, ready to attack. Hey, if somebody was after me and I looked up and I saw that, I wouldn't have a care in the world. You got the same thing. You have exactly the same thing. The same God who sent that for them sends what you need in your situation. That's right. If you don't remember anything else, take this to heart. You already got what you need. If you're a child of God, you already got what you need. God has already given it to you. The kingdom of God is within you. You are the seed. Within the seed is everything that you need in order to do what you need to do to survive, to be fruitful, to multiply, to flourish. Everything that will accomplish that is already within you. You just need to pray that God will open your eyes and allow you to get a hold of it. Our minds have been so beaten and filled with junk by the world, by the religious system, by the church world. We've got all this stuff cluttered in our minds that it's hard for us to get a hold of the simple facts. It's hard for us to get a hold of the simple truth. I think sometimes it would be great if God would just pick us up by our feet and turn us upside down and shake all that stuff out of us and let us start with a clean slate and just show us the very simple facts of the Word of God. Forget all the rest of it. Read this. Go by this. Believe this. That's right. All the answers are there. Amen. I don't know what else I can say. I just pray that you got it. I pray that the Spirit has revealed to you what you need to know. I do believe, as I said, that God has shown us promises, but God was also sending us a warning. Satan's going to continue to attack. He's going to continue to try different tactics. He may come out and try to just single you out like he did this man of God. Instead of going after the army, he went after the one that he thought was the army's strength. He may single you out. He may try to come up against you. But it doesn't matter if you're out there when you can't see any of us around and you feel like you're all alone. The hills around you are covered with the protection of the angels of God. With whatever you need, it is there. It is always there. When he pulls out that attack, when he comes up against you, you just pray, God, let me see. Let me see. Remind me that you are there because he is. And he always will be. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, once again, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord, to gather in your house. I thank you, Lord, for this place and for this people. I thank you, Lord, for your word and for the message, Lord, of hope. I thank you, Lord, for the promise, Lord. I thank you, God, for the encouragement and for the warning. I thank you, God, that you're always mindful, Lord, to give us that that we need. Now, I pray, God, as we... Go from this place, Lord, that you would be with each and every one. Keep your hand of protection and mercy on each one. Keep them safe, Lord. Deliver us back together again this evening, I pray, Lord. I pray, God, that there be one here who has any need, dear Lord, that you would show them, Lord, the answer to that need, that you would meet that need, Lord, that you would give them peace, that you would give them comfort. We thank you, God, once again for all of your blessings, for all of your done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.